Good afternoon. I am Kimberly Melnick, school board chair, and this special meeting of the school board of the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia is hereby convened at four o'clock on this sixth day of February, 2024. Pursuant to bylaw 1-46 and Virginia code section 2.2-3707, the school board will hold a special meeting on Tuesday, February 6, 2024 at four o'clock p.m. at the school administration building number six, 2512 George Mason Drive, Virginia Beach, Virginia 23456 in the school board room. The purpose of this special meeting is for the presentation of one policy 4-88 holidays amendment and number two policy 757 vehicles, motorized devices and animals on school grounds. Members of the public will be able to observe the school board meeting through live streaming on the school on school board vbschools.com forward slash meetings forward slash live broadcast on VBTV channel 47 and on Zoom. Thank you to those who have joined us in person and online. At this time, I will ask Madam Clerk to please tally the roll call. We'll just wait for the board members to log in. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. There we go. She's spinning. Okay. Okay. I put her in. All right. So, uh, Madam Chair, present in the school board chamber is Ms. Anderson, Ms. Brown, Mr. Callan, Mr. Culpepper, Ms. Franklin, Ms. Manning, uh, Chair Melnick, uh, Ms. Owens, Ms. Riggs, and Carolyn we and Ms. Weems. Thank you. And if you would now please join me in observing a moment of silence. Please stand as you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, adoption of the agenda. Are there any other modifications to the agenda as presented? Okay, hearing none, I call for a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Okay, motion by Ms. Franklin, second by Ms. Brown. Any discussion? Okay, the voting board is open. Okay, Ms. Anderson, how do you vote? Yes. And Ms. Weems, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, we have 10 ayes, so the motion did pass for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Okay, policy 4-88, holidays amendments. I call for a motion to approve an amendment to policy 4-88 holidays to include staff days as an exception for holidays. Can I, uh, 
How are we on the screens? Can I call for a motion? I don't see. Oh, I look up and okay. Motion by Ms. Owen, seconded by Ms. Weens. Any discussion? Oh, that's okay, Ms. Weens. Um, yes, um, I thought this was important to um, go ahead and discuss this and vote on this because in our preliminary discussions about calendar, even weeks and weeks and weeks ago, some of us had brought up the idea of maybe um, having election day, um, changing it, that maybe staff would go and whatnot. So I just thought that this needed to be clarified, as you see in your packet and on the information on your desk. Um, it's just adding two words, and I worked with Ms. Linetti on this for sufficiency, legal sufficiency. And so basically the designated holidays, the first line just adds staff days, unless otherwise designated in the school calendar as instructional days, staff days, or used as inclement weather makeup days. So we're just using staff days if we, if we choose to take that option. Okay, any further comments? All right, well, I call for a vote to approve an amendment to policy 4-88 holidays to include staff days as an, ex oh, we did motions. I don't know why this is repeated. I have a motion, Ms. Owens, seconded by Ms. Weems. We've discussed, voting board is open. Yes. My computer is still. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, Madam Chair, so we have 10 ayes, so the motion did pass. Okay, excellent. Moving on to B, policy 7 57, vehicles, motorized devices, and animals on school grounds amendment. I call for a motion to approve an amendment to policy 7 57, vehicles, motorized devices, and animals on school grounds. To allow the superintendent or designee to authorize exceptions to the restrictions on classroom animals with guidance. All right, motion by Mrs. Manning, second by Ms. Weems. Any discussion? All right, Mrs. Manning. Yes, um, I brought this forward after some uh, teachers had contacted me and they had also spoken to us at the last school board meeting. I think it was inadvertent when we made the change to this policy. Um, in 2022, um, it kind of excluded some lessons that our teachers had been doing, and um, so I felt it was important. We had about 100 of our teachers attend 4-H training in order to be able to um, present some classroom curriculum around um, an embryology project, and I felt that it was important that we needed to address this policy right away so that they could present their curriculum to, to their students as they've um, already prepared to, to do that this spring. So that's why I'm bringing it forward. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Owens. Thank you. Um, while I'm not opposed to us having the discussion, I was hoping uh, that it would have come through policy review committee as our typical procedures would be. My understanding uh, from looking at the 4-H public schedule is that egg pickup doesn't start until March 1st with things hatching, with the chicks hatching on uh, the end of the month. Um, and my understanding was that there were some administrative concerns about the, uh, the chicks being in classrooms. And I'm hoping that we can maybe hear from administration before we vote, which is what would have happened during a policy review committee. I am not fully prepared to discuss all because as we uh, are sitting here this evening, the Department of Teaching and Learning is working to examine the curriculum uh, to look for grade level standards and grade level, grade level links. Uh, there are matters that involve complaints that had come in the past with PETA. There are matters uh, that uh, come from the CDC. Uh, and these are all matters that the PRC will discuss. It is my understanding, Ms. Owens, that uh, what we are attempting to do at this time is to provide for the teachers to continue what some of them, uh, although you may have found March 1 as a 4-H deadline, are in the process of doing. I don't want to take uh, eggs or chicks from, from children who have been watching them. And so what we are doing here is putting in place uh, 
a policy that allows us to re-examine it here uh, when we meet at the next PRC. So it is a uh, temporary fix uh, to address a, an unfortunate situation, uh, whether it was uh, not communicated by principals, but the policy uh, in order that uh, we don't have teachers in violation, we're going to make an adjustment until we can sort this out. And I uh, don't think that tonight with the board is the place to do so. I think with your committee, the PRC, there can be some extensive discussion and decisions made regarding next year. So in short, we are looking to uh, address uh, a situation that could be very disappointing to families, children, and uh, of course some teachers. So just for clarification, it's our understanding that at this point, teachers do, some teachers, have eggs in the classroom already. They do, Ms. Owens, despite okay. the policy, despite communications from uh, Dr. Hamlin, uh, from uh, Ms. Colucci, uh, whether it was not communicated by principals, whether the policy was ignored, I cannot speak to that. But I can speak to the fact that there are children who are watching eggs. And okay. uh, I think we, uh, we are not in a position uh, to take that away. OK, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And so at this point, I'll just share that uh, I'm fine voting uh, for this until the next policy review committee because I think this needs to be fully discussed. I, I prefer to make an informed decision based on knowing what the concerns and issues are rather than uh, prior to, but this is where we are at this point, and so um, we'll move forward from there. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Weems? Um, yes, I just kind of wanted to clarify. I mean, obviously we know that if board members want to bring forth a policy, it does not have to go through the policy review committee. Um, that is the process that we usually find ourselves in and want to follow. However, these two issues that we're voting on tonight were time sensitive. Mm -hmm. And as um, Dr. Saltman just said, we have some teachers in the middle and students in the middle of this project um, we're in the middle of deciding our calendar, so that's why the other one was brought forward. And so, um, it, and even if something doesn't start till March, teachers have already bought, you know, some of the supplies and everything. And so that's why this special meeting was called because the policy review committee, if we waited till, till they met, in, I don't know, February fourteenth or fifteenth, I've forgotten when, and then two weeks back for information, and then two weeks back back for voting, that's the middle of March where we would be making these decisions. And so that is not efficient and that is not the best for our students and our teachers. So I will completely support this um, to let this project continue and look forward to some good discussion to, to hopefully see that we can um, continue it for next year as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Ms. Anderson? Um, I completely concur with Ms. Owens in that <clears throat> I do believe that this should have gone through um, PRC first. However, as a kindergarten teacher for many years, I also, um, we, we had the egg project and our students, they get really excited about it. And so if there are teachers out there who are in the middle of this process, I certainly wouldn't want to take that, um, that excitement away from those students. It's very exciting the day that the, that the chicks start hatching. Um, and, and I think that we might be able to reach some, some agreement, maybe even in PRC when we, when we review it uh, at the next meeting. But I'm comfortable in voting on this amendment today, and so I'll be voting in favor of it for today. Okay, Ms. Manning. Ms. Franklin, sorry. So just to clarify, we're just going to be looking at the amendment for today as a temporary fix, and then it will be going to PRC, is that correct? And then let me, I think the, the language is broad enough that it allows the superintendent to authorize exceptions to this based on guidelines. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that you have to change it. You may have to come back and actually say certain animals. There are more discussions that have to ha take place because there are rules and regulations regarding this stuff. So I think that's something we talk the PRC we don't necessarily want to be in violation of health code restrictions or sure. other issues. So, but I think the way uh, it's written, it allows the superintendent to adjust and make determinations based on what we know at the time. 
So this might be good language, but it might need to, and we may, in the course of researching this, determine that we really aren't authorized to do this. Mm -hmm. We might have to say certain things cannot happen, but we need a little bit more time to study okay. that. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Ms. Manning. So yes, when I first presented the policy, the initial language that I had Ms. Lanetti look at, she said it was legally sufficient, but um, I was asked if I would compromise to the current language that's here to give administration a little bit more leeway to look into this. But And some concerns that were presented um, were over uh, CDC guidelines, health issues, and I, I will say having grown up on a farm raising my own chickens, um, I think that there's probably less likelihood of catching a disease from a chicken than a rodent or a reptile or an arachnid <laughs> that's also authorized in this policy. So if we're going to be looking at health concerns, perhaps it needs to be looked at with all of them um, rather than just picking on our beautiful chickens. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Brown. Thank you. Um, so I, I can appreciate the comments um, to process being the PRC, but... As Ms. Weems had mentioned, um, anybody can bring something forward to the board, and um, the, the policy committee does not have the authority to stop the consensus of the board from occurring. Um, and I, I can actually think of a few occurrences where policies have come before this board since I've been on the board mm -hmm. without having gone through the committee as well. Um, so anyway. Um, the, the students that are affected are about the age of my daughter, um, and so I definitely support this amendment, and um, I do hope that this um, project can continue in the future because it is a pretty exciting project, and I actually remember participating in something similar when I was little one, so um, it would be my hope that we can continue, and I hope we have some good discussion in the PRC about it. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Riggs. Uh, thank you for coming forth with this um, this uh, revision because I'm excited about letting the kids continue to do this. Um, I'm hoping we can come to an agreement uh, with the CDC and all that. I don't know. But I, I do know that I've visited schools during this time in the last several years, and it is very exciting. And um, I'm glad that we've come up with a compromise for right now. I'm hoping it works. But um, I'm definitely voting for this, so thank you. Okay, seeing no more comments, I thank everyone for their input. And um, the motion was ba made by Ms. Manning, properly seconded by Ms. Weems. No further discussion. The voting board is open. Okay, Madam Chair, we have 10 ayes, so the motion did pass. Thank you, everyone, for coming early. Um, I appreciate it. And this special meeting of the school board is adjourned at 418, and we will reconvene at 5 o'clock for our next special meeting. Thank you. I know. We overestimated, we overestimated the time of the chicken discussion. That's okay. All for chicken.